Good day, dear students. Today, lecture titled Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation, DIC. By the end of this lecture, you have to be able to know the following. The definition of DIC, pathophysiology, the common triggering factors or causative factors, the common assessment parameters, lab investigation, as well as clinical manifestation of DIC, and finally, describe the medical management as well as the nursing intervention for the patients with DIC. As you know, normally hemostasis occur in our body after vascular injury. It will be in, occur over four phases. The first one with a transit vasoconstriction at the site of injury. Then uh, the platelet will adhere at the site of injury to form what we call primary hemostatic plug. Then uh, the coagulation cascade, the entrancing coagulation cascade will be activated to form the secondary hemostatic blood. Finally, the tertiary phase with, in which uh, tissue plasminogen activator will be released to, to inhibit or limit the hemostatic process. As you see here on the uh, left side, there is a vasoconstriction, then to the right, you will find the platelet aggregation to form the primary uh, hemostatic block. Then, during the secondary hemostasis, uh, it will be an activation of uh, coagulation cascade, the entrancing coagulation cascade, uh, to form the secondary hemostatic blood. And fi finally, there is a counter uh, a counter act or counter regulatory mechanism. Uh, to limit the hemostatic process at the site of injury by release of tissue plasminogen activators during the tertiary hemostasis. Regarding the definition of uh, DIC, which is a serious disorder of normal hemostasis and mainly characterized by three major characteristics. Number one, exaggeration of microvascular coagulation. Number two, depletion of the clotting factors. And finally, higher pleasing tendency. That's why consumption coagulopathy can be used as an alternative or synonym to DIC. Why? Because there is an clotting factors uh, used up in abnormal coagulation process. Regarding to the pathophysiology, of the DIC, there is a triggering condition such as patients with the sepsis or septic shock or infection. Uh, this condition leads to a, a microthrombi formation, as we mentioned before in Sears uh, lecture, uh, which leads to increase the consumption of blood uh, clotting factors and uh, increase platelet consumption. All these factors will predispose to deficiency and lack of clotting factors in the body parts, which consequently resulting in higher bleeding tendency in the other area of the body. That's why this condition usually associated with higher mortality rate. Uh, also, there is a generation of a hyperthromponemic state in addition to alteration in the physiological anticoagulant levels in addition to impairment in the fibrinolysis at the onset of uh, DIC, and finally activation of the inflammatory mediators at, uh, in the pathogenesis of DIC. As you see in this algorithm, uh, here starting with tissue plasminogen, uh, release of uh, tissue factors and endothelial injury, uh, coagulation cascade activation and the platelet aggregation, all these factors will really lead to a uh, widespread microvascular thrombosis with uh, leads to vascular occlusion, will predispose to tissue ischemia and uh, hemolytic anemia, with increase more consumption of clotting factors and uh, plasmine activation. Plasmine activation leads to fibrinolysis and fibrin split product. Uh, in uh, all of these factors will in, with inhibition of thrombin and depleted aggregation and fibrin polymerization will predispose finally into higher pleading tendency. 
regarding the risk factors of DIC, which include uh, uh, factors at uh, the site of uh, vessel or cause vessels injury, uh, such as any disease uh, state or uh, tissue injury or presence of foreign body in the bloodstream. In addition to the uh, causes relating to the clotting stimulus, such as sepsis and the multi-system trauma or multiple trauma and burn. Regarding to the causes of GIC, infection and sepsis, as we mentioned before in a serious uh, lecture, uh, traumatic patients such as motor vehicle crashes, uh, burn, uh, snag bites, hematological and immunological disorders, including uh, hemolytic uh, blood transfusion allergic reaction or uh, anaphylaxis condition or transplant rejection or autoimmune disorders and sickle cell crisis. In relation to the oncological disorders, including leukemia and tumors. In uh, uh, also, obstetrical complications such as amniotic fluid embolism, uh, missed apportion, eclampsia, return the placenta, and the placenta approach. Also, extracorporeal circulation. Extracorporeal means uh, uh, foreign circulation or circulation outside the body. Uh, such as bypass machine uh, circulation during a cabbage surgery, coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Uh, also patients with pulmonary embolism or fat embolism uh, uh, or, and also with a prolonged low cardiac output state uh, such as uh, heart failure, potent vasodilatation and potent hypotension, hemorrhagic shock, patients with anoxia, acidosis, ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome, hypo or hyperthermic state, patients with acute liver failure or acute pancreatitis, and finally, patients with the chemotherapy as well as radiation therapy. Regarding to the clinical manifestation of the patients with DIT, as we mentioned before, there is a, a micro thrombi formation, which result in organ ischemia and necrosis and uh, with abuse and uh, more depletion of uh, the coagulation factors, uh, it will end with uh, bleeding, higher bleeding tendency. So the, the consequence of uh, ischemia and necrosis uh, will vary according to the organ uh, will be affected. For the cerebral circulation, it will be in a form of a change in the mental status and confusion. For coronary uh, uh, circulation, it will be in a form of angina. Uh, also, there is a, will be a hypoxemia, oliguria uh, due to the affection of renal circulation or a non-specific hepatitis due to the affection of the liver, cyanosis and the infarction of the fingers, toes or tip of nose due to the affection of the peripheral circulations. Uh, and finally, it ends with higher bleeding tendency from any uh, site of the body, including the presence of uh, uh, hematuria or uh, hematemesis or uh, occult blood in the stool or melina, uh, 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 presence of mucosal uh, or subcutaneous bleeding such as uh, gingival bleeding or petechia, uh, which is bleeding in the subcutaneous tissue or ecomosis, and finally overt or cl clear bleeding from any uh, or of even uh, from the site of invasive line. Uh, these uh, are uh, the lab investigation. To confirm the diagnosis of uh, DIC, you have to remember all these lab investigation and the, uh, its normal value and uh, the kind of a change or abnormalities in the patients with GIC. You have to remember it very well. This uh, this also another group of uh, lab investigation to confirm the diagnosis of uh, GIC. Uh, as you see here, G dimer SA will be increased, uh, FDP uh, will be increased. Also, as subsequent effect of the microvascular clotting may affect the liver and, uh, and you will find a higher serum bilirubin level and may affect the kidney and you will find higher uh, blood urea nitrogen level.
These are the most common nursing diagnoses among the patients with uh, GIC. Regarding the uh, treatment uh, of the patients with DIC, which mainly aim to identify and correct the underlying cause, stop the abnormal coagulation process, control the bleeding tendency of your patients, correct the abnormal condition, uh, such as hypotension, hypoxemia, and uh, acidosis, and finally correct uh, Regarding the treatment strategy for the patients with DIC, you have first to identify the underlying cause and then correct it as soon as possible. Then you have to provide your patients with supportive therapy uh, to uh, counteract the higher bleeding tendency for your patients by provide replacement, including uh, blood volume expanders, uh, crystalloid intravenous, uh, such as lactated ringers or normal saline, uh, provide blood transfusion, provide uh, fresh frozen plasma to replace fibrinogen, uh, provide the platelet to uh, concentrate to uh, correct the thrombocytopenia. Regarding the nursing intervention, which mainly aim to uh, first, uh, improve the patient's oxygenation and ventilation by monitoring the pulse oximetry and the arterial blood gases, uh, uh, provide the, the patients with the IV infusion and the blood transfusion, uh, provide the patients with incentive spirometry and uh, encourage the patient to perform a breathing, breathing and coughing exercise every two hours, schedule your, your patient's turning, and finally uh, suctioning, uh, tracheal suctioning uh, and removal excess secretions, but be cautious during the tracheal suctioning because uh, your patient's higher bleeding tendency, which may further the uh, tracheal mucosal trauma. Uh, also regarding the intervention to improve uh, uh, circulation and perfusion, you have to monitor your patient's uh, temperature, color, capillary refill, heart rate, level of consciousness, urinary output, and partial pressure of arterial oxygen tension, and monitor the vital signs every uh, one hour up to four hours. Uh, monitor the patient's serum lactate uh, level daily. Uh, administer uh, packed RPCs and positive inotropic agents and intravenous infusion as all uh, older ordered as well as oxygen therapy uh, also uh, uh, routinely and frequently monitor your patient's uh, lactate level and uh, try to avoid any source uh, responsible for excess uh, serum lactate level including ischemic bowel and uh, peripheral ischemia uh, uh, and any condition responsible for decrease the body ability to clear the lactate including liver dysfunction. Regarding to the nursing intervention to improve a patient's hematological status, including monitor your patient's uh, thrombin time, uh, activated partial thromboplastin time, CBC count, uh, uh, FDP, D dimer, fibrinogen level, they uh, should be monitored daily uh, and uh, to know uh, the patient's response uh, to uh, the proper patient's response to the therapy. And then you have to assess every four hours the patient's hematological involvement, including thrombotic and the hemorrhagic manifestation. You have to quantify the degree of bleeding uh, by weight, the dressing, and count the bad, measure the amount of drainage uh, through a careful monitoring of intake and output, and test the patient's stool for the passage of blood, uh, and also the passage of blood th through the urine and the drain and uh, uh, with vomiting. And finally, you have to strictly adhere to the bleeding precaution uh, pump. Also, you have to assess the all uh, other organs to uh, their bleeding tendency for sign and symptom of bleeding. Uh, for pulmonary, you have to assess uh, uh, if there is a decrease in oxygen saturation and the presence of uh, crackles and the presence of uh, uh, pulmonary bleeding. Also for uh, uh, the visual changes, you have to assess the presence of the lobia, blurred vision, visual field deficit, 
uh, for uh, uh, retinal uh, thrombosis or hemorrhage and also for uh, to as you have to assess the presence of uh, a back pain a flank pain abdominal pain for uh, visceral organ bleeding you have to also administer the blood and coagulation factors as indicated you have to tr uh, to avoid uh, unnecessary invasive procedures or uh, management uh, strategies you have to avoid the medication that inhibit the coagulation or promote thromboses and finally uh, in case of phlebotomy or uh, uh, blood uh, for uh, blood taken for lab investigation you have to uh, apply pressure over the puncture site for uh, uh, three minutes up to five minutes uh, to avoid uh, excessive uh, uh, bleeding and use uh, firm uh, pressure dressing regarding to the intervention for fluid and electrolytes you have to weight your patients daily Mo a careful monitoring for intake and output and replacement of uh, diuresis uh, according to the patient's condition and according to the parents then administer intravenous fluid uh, start with uh, 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 crystalloid uh, or blood transfusion according to the patient's condition with careful monitoring then uh, monitor and replace magnesium and phosphate uh, daily uh, for your patients regarding to the intervention for patients mobility and safety you have to institute the bleeding precautions and uh, uh, provide bedded side rails uh, for your patients uh, try to avoid any sharp instrument or objects around your patients or at the bedside field and then assess uh, your patients uh, when your patients try to be out of the bed and uh, provide bed itself a protective devices if necessary and finally assess the patients for bleeding and the bruises every two hours or more frequently according to the patient's condition regarding to the skin integrity you have to assess the patient's skin at least every eight hours and then uh, a reposition for uh, the pressure area and uh, tr uh, uh, assess your patients for petechia and the ecomosis and schedule your patients turning every two hours consider the pressure relief and reduction uh, mattress and uh, try to avoid any shearing force uh, perform a range of motion exercise either passive or active according to the patient's level of consciousness and then assess the patient's risk to develop a pressure ulcer through using the Praden. and finally regarding the patient's comfort and pain control you have to assess your patient's pain level using a numerical pain scale and then try to correlate uh, this pain uh, with the potential sites of uh, ischemia infarction or hemorrhage and then notify your physician immediately then provide a warm compresses uh, to the site of pain the concept for uh, warm compresses to provide uh, a vasodilatory state and then decrease the ischemic pain then provide your patients with analgesia and sedation uh, as prescribed and finally monitor your patient's response to medication now we finish the lecture uh, you have to remember that uh, DIC is a, a life-threatening problem among critically ill patients and uh, you have to recall very well the abnormalities in lab investigations and uh, the most common sign and symptom for the patients with DIC and finally remember that there is no definite cure for DIC but you have to provide a supportive therapy for each body organ for your patients and thank you